Good afternoon. I'm Chris Morphew, Dean of the School of Education at Johns Hopkins, and on behalf of myself, the School of Education, and the Center for Talented Youth at Johns Hopkins, we're very excited to have you have you join us tonight to learn and listen to the Barclay Foundation and their 2019 Global Teacher Award winner, who I've had the great opportunity to sit next to and learn a little bit more about. We've been watching a video of, of Peter's work, and I think you'll be very excited to hear from him tonight. The Barkey Foundation was funded by was founded by Sonny Barkey. He believed through education and charity, lives could be changed around the world. The Barkey Foundation particularly focuses on capacity building interventions for teachers and school leaders and championing their work through initiatives such as the Global Teacher Prize. We've had the opportunity to learn more about the Teacher Prize over the last hour or so, and it served as a great platform for elevating the status of and recognizing uh, all of the great teachers around the world, and that's really the aim of the prize, and it's been a wonderful vehicle for doing that. I would like you to in, I would like to introduce you to uh, Vikas Pota. He is the chairman and member of the board of trustees of the Barkey Foundation. He has spearheaded the training of over 25,000 teachers and pioneered an innovative technology platform to reach marginalized girls in sub-Saharan Africa, as well as addressing the refugee crisis using the same platform. Vikas has designed a leadership program for school directors in Argentina, and he convenes the Global Education and Skills Forum and organizes the Global Teacher Prize, which seeks to celebrate the achievement of classroom teachers and uplift the entire status of the profession. Please help me welcome Vikas Pota to the stage. Thank you so much for your, for your welcome. Um, and for your hospitality. Um, friends, um, the world needs great new teachers. Uh, we live in troubled times. We have a crisis by I've, in my short time with no great experience in this. And whether we look at, whether we look at, you know, uh, war, when we, whether we look at climate change, whether, whether we look at all of the great challenges world is going through, um, our fundamental belief is that education is the cornerstone, the foundation uh, for helping for us as a global society to overcome these challenges. Um, at the heart of education, as we will all have signed up to and for, are um, uh, teachers. Um, I don't really believe, and I know you said um, you know the little story when you said uh, no, there's no research that shows that without teachers, uh, and yet we invest so little uh, in the social capital. Uh, today we have, a, we have a crisis in the world, um, a learning crisis, where there is, um, I would say, hundreds of millions of children who can't read or write. Um, we have a crisis with regards to the retention and recruitment of teachers, um, without whom we cannot make progress. Um, and it baffles me quite a bit as to how we address these challenges. As a small private family foundation, uh, what is our role in this? Um, we have decided to focus our energies on actually presenting to the world uh, stories about quite incredible teachers. And by doing so, we hope to change dinner table conversations from negativity about my child's school uh, to, oh, have you heard of this most amazing maths and physics teacher from a rural school in Kenya? Um, and by doing so, we hope that we are able to send a signal uh, to the next generation about the greatness of this profession. Um, Peter Tabichi is um, not only an exceptional classroom teacher, but the spirit in which he approaches his teaching and his responsibility is also what we celebrate. Um, apart from, as I said, being a, a great mentor teacher in his school, um, the kinds of initiatives that he has started, such as a peace building club, a, an, effort to, um, an effort to overcome the challenges of food insecurity in his part of the world by, um, by educating community members as to how to, how to plant drought-proof drought crops. Um, or whether you look at um, just you know his commitment to science, uh, 
uh, all of these things in the context that he comes from make him an outstanding recipient of this year's Global Teacher Prize. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Brother Peter Suichi. Thank you so much. It is a great honor to be here to share my story. So I'm going to go straight to what I do back at home, how I teach, and then later on, if you have a comment, um, uh, you can, uh, if you have a question, you can ask, or if you have something like an encouragement or what, yeah, what of, uh, the, the kind of like an advice, feel free because I'm still learning and I try to use every single opportunity to learn. So, um, I was uh, inspired to become a teacher by my family. I come from in the family of teachers. My own uh, father was a primary school teacher. And uh, I can say that he used to, when he was teaching, he used to teach, I can say that moral, kind of, like moral values, uh, uh, making kind of uh, focusing on character formation of students. So I was so much inspired by his style of, of, of really teaching. And at times, even at times, students could not understand why was he using that approach. At times they could say, he should teach us just what is going to come, what will enable us pass, get high grades. But recently, just, just a few years ago, when I was re reflecting his style of teaching, I said that this is wonderful, this is really, uh, this is great. And that's why after school, after my secondary school, my high school, I said I want to do, to become a teacher, I want to teach. And that's how I, I found myself uh, as a teacher. So it was my, my father and at the same time also teaching me. So, and uh, we could, uh, as, uh, as I was growing up, we went through a number of challenges. I was, um, I could walk to school barefooted and uh, in the school there were no facilities and uh, I lost my mother when I was young. So I went through a number of challenges and I'm seeing the same challenges, my students going through the same challenges. So, so that's why I feel so touched. I don't want to see my students also going through the same challenges which uh, really uh, uh, I went through. So. Here I come, I'm in a, uh, that school. It is uh, in a rural setup. This is in one of the social activities. I like uh, engaging students in the social activities, like debates. Uh, we have this club and uh, 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 Christian Union and so on and so forth, because that's a way of uniting them. So uh, the school is in a remote area, in, a, in a, a rural, a very remote area, and uh, away from the town, you know, we have in Kenya, we have Nairobi, and then we have another town, Nakuru, but it's a bit a distance uh, from, from Nakuru town. In a very remote area, students have to walk through uh, very poor roads, including even teachers, myself, have, uh, even during the rainy season, it becomes so hectic. And then the students, like 95% of the students come from very poor backgrounds. And, uh, uh, I can say that at times you find that in the morning, the level of concentration is slow because, you know, when you don't eat, it means you are not going to, you are not be able to study well. So that's what happens in the morning. We find that students at times, they are not able to concentrate. So that's why the school has a program of feeding them. After a few hours after they have, they have come to school, they give them breakfast. Breakfast, a very simple breakfast, that's porridge, porridge uh, from maize. It just boil and that's what they give them. And then lunchtime they give them uh, uh, beans and the maize which are boiled and then th that's what they get. And some students just feed on that. That's the only meal they get. At times they don't get supper at all. So they're very comfortable. So then the other challenge is that we don't have facilities. Lab operators, there are no enough classrooms. Like now this year, we have 500 students. A few years ago, uh, 2015, we, there were 200, less than 200. But now working uh, together with the teachers and encouraging students to work hard, giving them hope, I think the, the, the school has, we are re now receiving so many students training. And I can say 
Uh, myself as an individual, I just try to give myself uh, my contribution, my, my input as an individual, and I, I try to encourage others also to do the same. There are quite a number of challenges, but once they know, once they, they see that we are achieving results, they also join hands and then we are able to uh, work together. So I really enjoy the collaboration from the school and I'm getting a very good support from the school administration. So that's why each time I keep uh, really appreciating the much support that they are giving me. And I'm very sure they are giving me that support because they see the good results, what uh, the benefits, how the, the, the children are really benefiting. And therefore that's why there is so much support from the school administration and also some, uh, some, so much support from the other teachers. And so we work as, as a team. And uh, so we have of crowded classrooms and uh, also the other challenge is the shortage of teachers. And at times um, I have to really think on what is the best way to address this. Uh, like last year I used to have like that uh, three lessons in a week, that three lessons in a week, which means at times there are days I used to have like seven lessons uh, in a day. That means when I go to school in the morning, I have to teach like the whole day, from one lesson, moving from one lesson to the other. But now the good thing is like this year when I got the award, the government is also very supportive, has sent many teachers. You know, getting one teacher is a challenge because we have like in terms of resources and the, 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 like the money and so on. That's why you, it's so hard to get even one teacher for, 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 for one year. But now it happened for this year because I got the award. We were given like more than seven teachers by the government and I'm so proud and so happy. Even the school, so proud and very happy that that's happening and many other good things are happening. And we even the roads have been uh, worked on because we received uh, political re readers and other officials coming to the school. So the roads are, they had, they, had, they had to prepare the roads and uh, ensure that the roads are, are working well. So even the people in the village, they are so happy that that is happening. Um, so I try to uh, give them hope. Like in the year 2016, how ca what can I do? What is it I can do to really raise the self-esteem of the students? Because what happens, most of the parents, uh, many parents want to take their children to the, these top, top schools, you know, the, the national schools, international schools, those ones who, who do very well. So which means those ones who have not, who have very low marks, very low marks, end up not joining those schools. They cannot, you see, in most cases, they cannot join those good schools because those high schools, they, they only receive with those students with high marks. So our school ends up getting those, those kind of like low, low achievers, and that is it. More than 80%, I can say even, more, yeah, 90% of the students are like low achievers. And that is the observation I made. And they had low service team because they know they're just in school to finish for four years and get a certificate and they are, counted, uh, they are considered to be like school leavers, secondary school leavers. So slow service team. How do, we, how do I work on this service team? That was the question I was asking myself when I joined the school. And uh, I realized that they have the potential. I was able to uh, note uh, that they have potential. I was able to note that the students who can draw well, who can paint, who can, uh, okay, who can sing. Myself, I like playing piano. So at times, like during the Christian Union, we would have, and then uh, we meet students. I, I was able to identify the students. So I said, let me uh, come up with a program of really getting the, uh, capturing the talent of these students. So I initiated a club called Talent Nurturing Club which has never been there, but I, my focus was to really get, the, really get the talents of these students, because I realized that almost all the students have a talent, either singing, painting, therefore I was able to see that. And then I thought it would not work. I would not be able to get support from the school, because I was just, I, I was not an administrator. But within a week, I was able to see students coming, so many students coming to train. And then the school uh, now administration was very supportive when they saw that uh, they are achieving so well. And one of the days they were able to see, make a presentation. They were able to sing so well. They were making very nice drawings. And that is it. So 
I had that, and then we also have the science club, also uh, expanded the school science club. Uh, I was, the, one of the highest position I was given in that school was being the patron of science club. Uh, it's not easy, but I say I'll now work with that and to make sure that I do my best. I don't have to wait and like become the debut principal or become the principal or all of that. Let me do what is within my reach. So I did my best. I was able to identify students who are very creative and I was able to give them close mentorship in collaboration with the other teachers. And they were able to come up with projects. I was encouraging them to just have simple projects like just getting a, a, like, a, a, like a very simple, just simple, pro but the main idea was to really introduce them to a scientific kind of uh, process of how do you like how do you research how do you correct data how do you record how do you analyze how do you pres make a presentation that was my my aim and that's why I was encouraging them to uh, really come up with the simple projects but then later on I found that these students are very creative they were even able to get so very nice pro science projects and uh, um, because I was working with, working with them closely, I found that they were able to make very nice presentations and when they were competing with the other schools, they were able to even now to do them. From this top, which, the ones which are considered to be like the, the, the top schools, okay, with, which receives those high achievers. So whenever they were meeting them, they could just uh, kind of like uh, emerge winners and then proceed from level one level to another, maybe county, sub-county, county, regional, and then finally up to national. So it happened in the year 2016, 2017, and then 20, even um, 2017, uh, 2018, and this year. So it has been happening, and they have been uh, people have been people have been one, uh, wondering what is it happening, and even. Uh, even the news on the newspapers and uh, the television, they have been, uh, the, the news have been there capturing their story and the kind of creativity uh, um, that they, they, they have. So whenever they approach me to ask me what I do, I just answer them that one thing is you have to believe in the gift of these students. Every child, every child has a gift. So regardless of where they where they come, what they are going through, the challenges they are going through, or whether they are low achievers, they have a gift. They have a gift. And then now, you as a teacher, it's good to, mention, to really uh, help them, mentor them to bring out that gift. At times, they have, they have it, but because they don't have some good mentorship, they don't know how to get it, it dies. Even they they become so, uh, when they're advancing in age, they still don't know. Some of them discover that they have a gift when they are still, when they are maybe out of college. So I was trying to minimize that. So that's what I was doing. And then the other thing I was doing was to encourage them use the local, uh, kind of local, uh, kind of improvised materials, local available materials, uh, simple projects, even some of them were not, they, they were really not uh, really buying a lot of, the, the, the school could not really uh, kind of like buy a lot of so much expensive materials. Um, I remember two students who uh, came up, were able to produce electricity from plant cheeses, just getting some local materials called, uh, we have SISO, they squeeze out the cheese, and then that cheese, they, I don't know, in chemistry, they call it, I don't know, the electrolyte, and then they were able to have cells, okay, and then connect them, I don't know, in a parallel series, and it was able to produce electricity. I thought it would not work, but with the pro, uh, proper mentorship, it was able to work, and uh, the kind of current being produced will be, like, stable for a long time, and, uh, like, uh, up to a voltage of, like, 20 volts. So it worked, we, even there was so much kind of, Shocked, and that's why in the year 2017, uh, they won an award by the Royal Society of Chemistry, which is based in London, and they were given some cash and some gifts. And then, the other thing that I also use is technology. I integrate technology in those clubs, and also even when I'm teaching. 
But unfortunately, we don't have uh, the devices. We just have <laughs> one, 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 one desktop computer. But now with this award, I hope that we are going to read something, we are going to have the changes. So struggling with one computer and then uh, uh, no internet. Wi-Fi, they don't know what is Wi-Fi. If you say Wi-Fi, they may think you are talking of a wife. You know, they don't know the internet. So it's a challenge. So as a teacher, if I am to access internet, I have to use my phone. There is a way you connect it, and then you link it to the, to the laptop or the, the one computer. All, at times it's so hectic because even accessing that, using that method is hard. At, I have to go to the nearby cyber cafe in a nearby town. We have Nakuru and then we have another kind of shopping center. We have cyber cafe in Joro. So I go there over the weekend or the, in the evening or over the whole day to, go, to download materials from like YouTube, and, and all of that, save enough so that during that week or the next maybe a month, I'll be able to have something to enable me to uh, really teach. So I like that and I also like assisting my fellow teachers to do the same. At first I was not so perfect in ICT, but because of having the passion, you know, the first thing is when you have passion, I'm very sure you'll be able to do so wonderful things. So uh, really because I have passion in that, it made me even go to an extent of creating a program. I have not done computer science anywhere, but I was able to tr really train myself. I, I was able to learn going online. I'm, I was able to learn like PHP, uh, I don't know, HTML, C the, 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 the CSS and, and so on and so forth. I was able to come up, come up, design my own software that can be used to analyze the learner's progress. Because initially I realized that students, they were just using the manual method, which was hectic, taking like two weeks to analyze. But now with this, it takes, once they have entered the marks and everything, it takes just like, uh, just a matter of clicking and you're able to get the report. And it is assisting the school so well and that's quite uh, well. So I use integrated technology, even when I'm also uh, training the students, mentoring the students to make, to know how to make a presentation, you know, for them to be able to uh, do this, they have to know how to make a presentation. I take videos, I use my phone, I take a video, and then later on after their presentation, I show them. They are able to see the mistake, and then next, this, next time when they are presenting, they are able to do so well, I just by using my phone. And that's the trick I've been using, and the students have been doing, doing so well, and that's why recently in the month of May, they were qualified to participate at the international uh, science fair in, uh, in Arizona, Phoenix, and they were given an award. They won an award and uh, they were awarded by UN. So um, I can say that generally it requires creativity and uh, one wants want to reflect a lot on the best way to assist the students and believing that every child has a gift and really uh, unlock their potential. And uh, besides just teaching, I believe that there is, uh, there, is, there is a need to really teach them values. For them to learn other skills, you don't just go to class to teach and then you go, you say that that is it, you wait for the salary. I believe that it's good to engage the students in other activities. And that's why we have like Peace Club. And in Peace Club, we are, we are able to participate in uh, things like uh, chowing. I like chowing every morning. And then uh, during, in the, after, after lessons in the evening, they come and then so we, we, we kind of together. So in that case, the, it will kind of enhance things like uh, cooperation because we have to work together. And then uh, I try as much as possible to ensure that they learn the values. Like now, uh, this club, we have, we, have, uh, we have things like debates. And then I try to teach them about the values, not just only focusing on what I teach. I teach physics and mathematics, those are my subjects. But I'm so much passionate when I talk to them about life skills, about, uh, about uh, like uh, respect, uh, uh, honesty, and so on and so forth. So that's why 
I find myself in, in these other activities, like sporting activities. So these are like the, the two students I was talking about. Here we have, uh, we have this is Esther and this is Salome. These are the two students who design a, a, a kind of a device that the blind people can be, you, be able to use for measuring length of an object. And uh, just a few months ago, they were in uh, Arizona. I don't know how far it's it. I think it's a bit far. In Arizona, <laughs> yeah, I've traveled. I'm just thinking that it, I'm just feeling that it's just here. So they they they, they thought they would participate. They just have an opportunity to to participate. It, it gave them an opportunity to be on the plane, and it was so wonderful. And they, where they were staying in the hotels, it was they was wondering what kind of is this really a bedroom because at home. It, one bed is shared by like three, and it's a small bed. But where they were sleeping, it is a big room, a big bed, and just one person, and it's so comfortable. So, it, it was, so they went back and narrating the stories to the other students. It was quite inspiring, and and uh, that has really inspired even the other students to even to work hard. And finally, as I said, the two students were given an award, were given some cash, and uh, and so on and so forth. So I look forward to really use the Global Teacher Prize. I see this one as an empowerment to inspire others, inspire the people in the community, inspire my students, uh, the other teachers, and also inspire and empower them. And that's why even the money that I was, the funds that I was given, I want to give it back to the, I don't want to do personal investment. I believe that that's an, um, uh, because they are the ones who, these students are the ones uh, who really enabled me to achieve it. It's something that I was not planning to get. So I want to really uh, invest in that and ensure that they are uh, empowered and so much uh, we have uh, a way of supporting uh, STEM science and then uh, look for ways of really getting out the talents of these students and then also do something in the community in terms of agriculture and, and so on, supporting because we have the challenge of food insecurity in our, 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 in our village. And it has given me an opportunity to meet so many people. And uh, I'm so happy. This is our K president in Kenya, Honorable Uru Kenyatta. And I've met quite a number of people even recently. It was a great privilege to meet the the president in the in the of the most in the most powerful I don't know uh, <laughs> the most powerful office in the world you know it's a privilege so I associate that with the really that that teachers really also deserve recognition and uh, I also believe that uh, we are facing so many challenges in uh, like in Africa but the potential is within us and. Uh, I believe that through science, good quality education, uh, quality education and through science, we'll be able to really be able to get a solution. So that we don't have to sit and then wait for some other people to come and uh, really solve for us the solutions. Uh, we, we, we need to really, and that's why I'm much into STEM, and uh, I encourage my students to really uh, love mathematics, science, and, and so on and so forth. And uh, I look forward to partnering with other people because um, I, I don't want to say I'm an expert. Each day I, have, I take every single opportunity. Like now uh, I'm here, I'm also learning something. I want to consult, to get advice from people, and even uh, if I get an opportunity to study, I want to even go for more, get more education so that I'll be able to go back and uh, really uh, be able to really solve this, uh, 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 cooperate with other people to solve the, cha uh, the, the challenges. So that's why I'm really looking forward to partnering, cooperating with the other people, uh, both here in Kenya and even outside, outside Kenya. Because, and I do that because I see th these children have potential. You know, this, the way you are seeing them, all of them, they have, the, they have a dream. If you ask them, what will you like to be? They will tell you. But that dream is going to be, I don't know, that is not going to be achieved. It is not going to be achieved. And it's not going to be achieved because they are not given the proper mentorship. Uh, the, there's no 
good education. So as teachers, we have really a big role to play. And that's within, as an individual, I try to make uh, an individual effort to to really ensure that they shine and they, they get their pace. And I believe that they have the gifts. And also remembering, including the girls, and I've seen that girls also have the same potential as boys. And that's why even most of the girls who have been doing so well are girls. I've seen that once you show them the way, girls can really do, can do more work. And, and they can uh, do away with that mentality that it is always boys who should be ahead. And I've seen that when once, girls are, once you make girls believe that they have their potential, they can really do wonders. And the boys feel challenged. You, know, you see boys in the village on that, uh, in those places, they don't want to see girls ahead of them. So they also work hard. And then the girls also working hard. So at the end of it, you find that everyone is working hard and it, they, they, they are really uh, also, uh, 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 there is kind of performance in so many aspects is improving. So I believe in the importance of teachers, and as teachers, we have a big role to play. We don't have to wait to really uh, rise to positions for us to uh, assist these children. As an individual, that's what I do as a classroom teacher. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to me. Yeah. Comment, uh, advice, I say that each day is a, an opportunity to ask. In case you have some advice, comment, or a question, feel free to ask. I think we appreciate it. hear me anyway you don't need to I, I just tell me a little bit about the school is the school is it a public school is it a state school and can anybody go to the school or is it a religious school I just I want I asked this question because you seem to be have a religious uh, breath on and I wondered if the school was a religious school yeah thank you okay let me answer uh, that and then I'll if I forget that so I can say that um, I am a Franciscan uh, uh, brother, uh, not a priest. You know, people call me a priest, but I'm not a priest. We don't become priests. Brothers, so a, a Franciscan brother, it's our riches. It's just my own, my own choice I made. I found that it will give me more freedom to dedicate my services to the community. You know, everyone make, make, you make personal choices, so I made my personal choice to be a brother. Now, the school is a state school, it's a public school, it's not a private school. But before that I was teaching in, a, in a, a private school and I was like an administrator. But I was touched by the challenges these students in that kind of village are going through. And that's how I find myself, I joined, that's how I came to join the school. And uh, so it is open to all the children and we mainly receive students from that village that village who walk from long distances, some walk as long as seven kilometers. So we get students. And, but now the challenge is maybe majority are like low achievers because those top, those high achievers, they want to go to those top schools which are not near there in that village. They are maybe far away. They are far away from that village. So that's how the school is. So it's, um, it's a public school. Not a, not really a mission, not really a riches, but it's a public. And I said, let me go there to make a personal contribution because I didn't know exactly where to start from, but I knew that uh, I'll be able to make a difference. You know, where there's a way, there's a way. And, uh, and you, once you have the passion, I'm very sure you'll be able to achieve a lot. And that's, what, that's how I find myself in the school. Hi, Zeb Twain, American University. Um, I got a couple questions. You said, um, first, I look at the video. You're a science teacher. 
and I saw there was a project, science project, that the girls were involved using plant-based and sewer for energy or electricity. Can you elaborate on that? That's very interesting. That's part of STEM, right? Um, the second question is, you, you, you touched lightly. You said you also want to teach them formation of character and values. What are they? Now, my remark uh, about what you said, it, it's such a great thing you said to meet the president, man of power. Let me tell you one thing, talking about values. The president is worthless unless he can lift the millions of citizens out of poverty. And sure, what you do, uh, the club of peace, he, he has to bring prosperity, happiness, and peace. Maybe you should switch place with him. He, is, he has no power, he's no great. As long as his country is poor and the people are, you know, living in abject poverty without justice, forget it. That's what I think. Second, the, your story about the girls going to a hotel with that big bed, back to the foundation of what you believe in. Do not imitate the West. Forget about the big bed. You, when you talk about teaching character formation and values, what you have to do is the community and the village you're in, one cares for the other. The rest of it is materialism, and you see around the world how it has destroyed countries, villages, people, and the inequality is so big in the world. So forget about that big bed. What your students need to learn from you and the, the, the reason, the purpose, and the mission of your school is STEM, science, technology, engineering, mechanics. Whatever it is they have to learn from the West is the best of science, discovery, and, you know, whatever is technology will serve the public. Not, you know, the trend of this capitalism and corruption. So can you answer the first two questions? <laughs> the program that you have on the video, and yes. you're talking about value, character formation and value. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, maybe I can start with that. Um, because I believe that um, uh, as a teacher, there's more to do above, going above and beyond the classroom teaching. So uh, by engaging them in activities like um, we have Peace Club. Eh? You, are, you know, Peace Club, uh, we, in that school, I did not mention, it's so diverse. We have students who come from uh, diverse kind of uh, backgrounds. Religion, in terms of religion, different, different religions, different tribes. And then, of course, they are no, it is not just purely girls or just only, 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 only boys. It is both boys and girls. So if, uh, as a teacher at times, if you are not careful, what happens? You will find that the students try to separate themselves based on those on, on those uh, backgrounds, either gender or tribes. And it was happening when I joined the school. And I made an observation the first thing, the first week. So, and then it happened that I was appointed to be the patron of Peace Club. And I saw that as an opportunity, opportunity to unite the students. Making the students work together. How do you make them work together? You have to engage them in a, something they can do debates, like tree planting, something at least, maybe sports, something that can make, make them work together. They achieve something as, as a group. So they'll be able to learn about the value of working as a team. Teamwork, they learn about the teamwork. They learn about cooperation. You don't have to tell them, cooperate, or you, have to, you don't have to mention that to them. But once you, give, you create that environment, the, those values, they, they just come automatically. So there is a cooperation. And then when they are working, they have to res learn how to respect one another. When someone is, exp when someone is expressing, expressing their uh, views, they have to respect the views of the other one. So you'll be able to have respect. So that is what I do. I don't mention, I don't mention about the values, but I just create that environment for them to be able to learn about the values. So that's what I do. And I'm also, also engaging them in the other, like, Christian Union and so on and so forth. And then back to the other question about the, the, the project the students were working on. It is in the Science Club. Science Club is also one of, of the 
of the programs. I'm, I'm the patron. I was appointed as the patron of that. So mine is to give them a, a, a kind of close mentorship, guiding them properly on how to make presentation. You know, they develop communication skills on how to, how to get, how to really get, bring the ideas, whatever that they have, okay? And then in the process, they end up uh, really learning on how to, those research skills. And then uh, in that case, they, 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 were, they were designing, uh, they were trying to think on how to produce electricity from the local plants. So they got uh, like uh, Ramon, and then we had a Saiso trees, which was squeezed, and then uh, that was put in some containers, uh, very from just which they improvise those small containers, and then they put those the, the choices in those containers, and then they were able to get some wires, connect from one container to the other. So they were able to in, in physics you talk of either in the series, and then at the end you get something like a bulb, or you have like a voltmeter for you to know that there's voltage, or an ammeter for you to know that there's current flowing. So that's what they did. And initially they thought it is something that will not work. Maybe it will work for two minutes and then it's off. They were able to look for ways on how to minimize, to make it last for long, for like more than 20 minutes. And then initially it was only producing like one fault or two faults. But later on they had to look for ways on how to produce more voltage. That's why I was saying that finally they were able to produce like 20 volts. And uh, for that to happen, they, they have to develop those critical things. They have to be very creative. What is it can be done? Either by increasing the number of cells or by, um, uh, by having like, uh, and so on and so forth. So that's what I basically, that's what they were doing. And the students won, uh, they were given an award by Royal Society of Chemistry. Yeah, in the, in the year 2017. And it has been, so such things have been happening for a number of years, from 2016, 2017, 2018, and even this year, we had some students who also given an award uh, by UN. I have a question. Um, you, right here. The, uh, you, you, you say your students start as low achievers. Um, but after you take a low achiever and find their gift, and they... Um, have their drive and your mentorship, they're not low achievers anymore. Um, so do they stay in the school in the village and contribute to the community? Do they have an opportunity to leave and go to other schools? What's the, what's the process for their education? So give them that environment to know, uh, to, to really discover their talents you know, identifying their talents, discover their talents. And then, um, you know, once they know that they can achieve something, what happens, the next thing that happens is their service team goes up. They now see that, oh, we can also do this, we can also achieve this. So their service team goes up. So the next thing that will happen, you will see them, even their level of discipline will go up. Even the academic performance also goes up. That's why even uh, like last year, we had stu uh, 26 students who joined uh, 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 colleges and universities. And it never happened. For such poor schools, you, you rarely get students who join universities. But we had students joining. So it's just, uh, it pulls their service team. And then uh, I can say that they are able to achieve a lot. And even they are almost at par like those other students who. Uh, uh, who thought that maybe they are like high, who are considered to be like high achievers, and uh, I can say that the same students study and uh, become teachers, become uh, do different things, and then the services, of course, are given back to the back to the society. Okay, so so basically that's that's what happens. So they don't go to other schools, but once. Uh, they just remain there, but we keep uh, uh, keep mentoring, giving giving them more more support. Yes. Hello, Yvonne. Um, the Foundation for Empowerment. I used to work on East Africa, particularly on Kenya, in 1991 to 1998, and I still remember Nakuru 
uh, has so many beautiful flamingos. And um, so um, I have a couple of questions. First of all, I would like to thank you so much. Of course, every research shows that the uh, um, teacher is the most important uh, variable for uh, children's education, regardless of the wealth of the countries, including U.S. So um, your children are so blessed with having a teacher like you. Um, so I'm so thankful to you, and it's, very, um, it's an honor to be here. So my question is a little bit um, in the, uh, uh, the, the gentleman's question. Like, um, for example, yeah, children um, come now. Then what is their future? You said that some students are going to the universities. But how about the other children? Uh, can they go to the university or some other vocational training? Or what is their sort of a career path? That's my first question. Second question is that the uh, tuition is tuition free. Actually, I remember when the uh, uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta became the president, he promised that the, uh, there will be no tuition for children. But the uh, other expenses such as the uh, uniform and the uh, books and other things can be quite a uh, uh, burden to the, uh, this, the children in a uh, rural area around the Nakuru. So I'm wondering what is the uh, tuition and what is the uh, sort of um, the, um, education, ed educational expenses? Is that really a uh, burden for children to come to school? I have many questions, but I will stop here. Okay, thank you. Maybe I can start with the last one. I can say that the government is uh, really doing great uh, uh, trying its level best to ensure that there is quality education. Like right now, we are moving from uh, the old curriculum 844 to a new uh, to a new system of of of, of uh, education, which is competence based. You know that is it focuses on uh, development of skills. What I was talking about about the values, and I'm so happy that is happening. Competence based, whereby. The more focus is on the competence, uh, the skill, development of the skills, other than just academic knowledge. You know, education is not just about the academic knowledge. So these children have great opportunities. When they are still growing, they can learn these values, these skills, when they are growing. But if you teach them when they are out of school, they will not. They will not change. They will become, I don't know, they cannot change. So. I'm so happy that it's happening. Uh, then uh, at the right moment, there are so many, uh, I can say that there are efforts for that one to be achieved. Already it has been enrolled in the lower elementary, elementary kind of school level. So I'm so happy and I promote it. Of course, I'm so proud of my country. And then uh, there is also uh, in terms of the other support, the, initially there was free primary school, uh, free primary, Free, free primary education, and now secondary education is also being made free. And that's a, that has really attracted so many students to uh, are able to afford education. Initially, what used to happen, students finish primary school and then they are not able to join because of the school fees. Some families cannot afford school fees because of poverty. They can, some uh, parents cannot, don't work, so how do they get the money? So some students ended up just being at home or just... Uh, that also raise uh, maybe like uh, discipline or crime and so on and so forth. So right now we have free second education. So what happens maybe students are unable to like pay for their lunch fee, but basically majority are, are able to afford what is so I'm, and I'm so happy for the effort they are making. And I hope that I, it's like there's a hope that uh, we are getting on the right track. But what is needed now is resources. Like most of the African countries are not yet stable, and other people may think that we are stable and we need it. We we have everything to do everything. We need the, to cooperate with other people, partners. We need even still more funding. We are not yet, but now unfortunately at times you find that the funding is not properly used. So we need more funding. We need more support from other people for us to really be able to achieve, uh, to enable these children to be able to achieve a lot, and then. Back to the first question about uh, what happens to the other children who are not able to like achieve, who, uh, achieve their best. I can say that 
every child has a gift. Every child, regardless of where they are, regardless of their background, the challenges they go through, they have a gift. So that's why myself as a teacher, a classroom teacher, I struggle to give my personal input, ensuring that the, uh, uh, their talents come out, they shine. Because whenever I see a child, I see, I, I see like, I don't know, I can use the word goal. There is something special about the child. So, um, so try to give them support. And then, uh, unfortunately, you, get, you can still get those ones who are in discipline, those ones who, are, who don't still discover their talents. So we still keep giving them support. And they, that is it. That's what I can say. That's what I can say. Thank you. <laughs> here we are very spoiled here and we get upset if we have classes more than 25 students and I counted 60 in your class and I'm feeling I mean I, I'm feeling exhausted for you because to reach that many students with the level of passion and integrity seems astonishing do you ever get tired yes I <laughs> used to get tired uh, that uh, I think like 33 lessons in a week it's not easy. There are three lessons. And then you have to do these other activities, these other, other you know, uh, above, above and beyond the classroom teaching. So at first it was hard. But with time, when you do it, you know, you get the energy, you get the, you know, you, you are able to do it. So at, um, uh, we have no option. We have to do it. You know, it's a sacri it requires sacrifice. You have no option. You know, the workload and the, that teacher shortage and all. but it's just a matter of just <laughs> facing the challenge having the passion and uh, I'm very sure once that is achieved you'll be also, you'll continue achieving more that's what it's going to do you may feel okay at first you may feel so tired but with the time once you really look at the positive aspect of it you'll be able to achieve a lot because I believe that every uh, be, uh, behind every challenge there is an opportunity but if you see a challenge and then you say that is the end, that's the end of me, and then you surrender, I'm very sure you are not going to achieve, you are not going to move forward. But just try to make, turn these challenges and then behind them there are so many, so many opportunities. And that's what I'm seeing that even in that village, there are so many opportunities. And I believe with the time, the school is going to prosper. We are going to achieve a lot. Thank you. Great story of what uh, one passionate teacher can do, and thanks for the Barkley Foundation for uh, bringing Peter to our attention and bringing him here to DC. I have a gift for you that I knew was back then. I was hoping it was back then. So thank you, Peter. Yeah, great to you. meet you. Great to yeah. see you. Yeah. Good luck in your travel to the United States, and good luck getting back to your classroom. I'm sure you miss your students, and, and, sure. and I'm sure they miss you. Exactly. Thank you very much. Thanks so much.